Good morning, grandkids. Well, we're back with Lonely Worlds. And uh, when we left off last time, we were still on the cold ice world and uh, snow and freezing, but they had almost been caught up to by these black monstrous things with the red glowing eyes and Haley and Felix are both on Ian's back uh, running, running. He says six sets of red compound eyes focus on us. A dreadful piercing howl rises from each of the figures. That cold ravenous need to feed scrabbling and clawing against my consciousness. I clutch at the hair of Ian's back, willing him to move faster, but they're almost upon us. Our, and, and remember this last paragraph? Our circle of firelight has dwindled to a single guttering flame. The dark has risen, and now it's all around us, the last light of our survival. flickering dimly between its black cavernous jaws. Jaws that are poised to snap finally shut. And remember they had been trying to figure out how they could travel without waiting for the call because they want to travel now to get away from these creatures. And they've each tried and they've each come up with three different feelings about trying to travel and Ian uh, said he sees a door if they could just reach the door and try to go through it so this is what uh, they had each been trying to do so let's see if they managed to do anything and where it took them this time If you two are going to do anything, now would be a good time, Ian roars, putting on a la last desperate burst of speed as we charge along the side of the cliff face, the monsters screeching and cackling with glee at the thrill of the hunt. Haley turns in the saddle to pull a makeshift arrow from the bundle strapped to her back, which she fits to her bow and looses into the cluster of demonic creatures bearing down on us closer with every second. From her grunt of frustration, I can tell that she's having no success, but my eyes are squeezed tightly shut. Not from fear, though I'm certainly terrified, but from concentration. He's, he's trying to make them move on. None of us can feel the call. I don't know if it's going to come soon or at all. And if it doesn't, we're all going to die. So if it's possible to move on without it, if I'm ever going to find out, now is the time. I'm picturing the door, as Ian suggested. I can see it in my mind's eye. I didn't consciously choose it, but it's my bedroom door from the house we lived in when I was little. I can see the pale blue paint the Noah's Ark sign with the words Felix's Room in bright colorful letters. It's shut, but the handle's very clearly in focus and I'm reaching for it. If I can open it, I might be able to step out into the corridor. And if I'm in the corridor, I can take us to a different room where the monsters can't follow. Good idea, right? All I need to do is turn the handle. It's just too far to reach. Felix, Haley cries, if you can do it, do it now. Almost, I breathe. Utterly focused, I reach out with my thoughts, just touching the handle with the tips of my fingers. I stretch, straining my mind to the point of physical pain. Felix, there. 
My fingers curl around the brass handle and I push down and the door in my mind swings open. I pull the three of us through and then, 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 where are we? Where are we? We're falling, we're falling, we're falling into ourselves. Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? We have to stop, stop, stop. That sounds like them falling through where, whatever they fall through. Cold. I'm on the ground and it's cold. Snow is just on my fingertips. But I'm not cold. The ground is cold. The air is warm. Just like on the ice world when the blizzard stopped. I open my eyes. The sky is bright and pale. A red sun glaring down, bathing the snow fields with light. I'm high up, looking down on it all. Dazed, I turn and take in my surroundings. This is still the ice world. We're on a flatter patch of a rocky slope by the mouth of a cave. Dizzying, dizzyingly, that's a hard word to say, dizzyingly high up on the side of a mountain. I'm sitting on the snowy ground, my clothes damp, my muscles aching. Ian and Haley lie beside me, the centaur's legs sprawled haphazardly, his tongue lolling out comically <laughs> out of his mouth. Haley is curled in a ball. Let's turn the page. Neither is hurt. Did I do it? Did I move it on, us on without a call? It sounds like he was able to move them on to a different location on the same world, at least got them away from those ravenous wolves, demonic wolves. So without the call, it seems they can't travel to a different world, but exerting their will in trying to travel, they can manage to get to a different place where on the same world they're on. So this might be interesting. At least it got them to a safe place for a while. Did I do it? Did I move us on without the call? It felt different. Nothing like moving on ever was before. If moving on with the call was stepping through a door, this was diving off a canyon, landing in rapids, being tossed and thrown and battered by the storms and vortices of time and space. Remember what it was, what it was saying? What? It was saying, and then, and then, and then, and then, we're falling, we're falling. I managed to grab onto something, I think. I caught hold of this world before we were swept away. Maybe he should have let themselves get swept away and they would have went to a different world. I looked down into the snow fields, my eye drawn towards a cluster of woods. Well, they landed by a cave. Aren't they going to go in there? The cluster of woods that Ian and I found Haley in, I realize. So they're not... They're just up higher from where they were. This must be the mountain the monsters were chasing us along. So where are they now? Ian groans. I run over to him and help him climb unsteadily to his feet. Or to his hoofs, I mean. <laughs> he looks around blearily. Where are we? We're still in the ice world, I tell him. I think... I think I managed to move us, not onto another world, just a little up the mountain. That was fortunately timed, Ian remarks, shaking his head and chuckling. What happened to the scary things? No sign of them. A few moments later, Haley wakes up as well, and when she's 
regained her bearings, she voices the concerning observation that there doesn't appear to be any obvious way down. Uh-oh. Maybe there will be a tunnel in that cave that will go down. Maybe they don't want to go down. Maybe the wolves are still down there. What happened to this? Oh, wait. Uh, I lost my space. At least we have shelter, I say, gesturing toward the cave. Maybe we can wait in there until we get the call. I thought we didn't need it now, Haley says, grinning. I'm not doing that again, I shudder. No way. I had no control at all. If I'd let us actually leave this world, I don't think we'd have ended up anywhere at all. We had just we would have just been lost. But he doesn't know that. He might have been able to take him somewhere else. Lost where? Ian asks, and I'm not certain myself. These are just feelings I get. Vague silhouettes of knowledge cast in my mind. From where? I don't know. So maybe he is getting info. Just lost, I say. I'm not exactly an expert on this. What's that? asks Haley, pointing, and we look towards the woods. There's some kind of commotion happening on the near side. Shapes moving quickly out of the forest towards us. Something brown followed by several other somethings that are black. There's the demon wolf. But what's this something brown? The monsters, I realize. But what are they chasing? I, Ra, Ian murmurs. We look at him. It's us. He sees them being chased out of the woods. I look again at the leading figure. It can't be, but it is. It's Ian, bounding through the snow at a full gallop and on his back, tiny from this distance, but still recognizable, are Haley and me. I don't think you just moved us in space, Ian says. We time traveled, Haley finishes, looking at me with wide, odd eyes. You sent us a few minutes into the past. That doesn't sound right. Sounds like he sent them a few minutes into the future because they're looking back down at the past. The figures work their way across the snow, trailing clouds of churned up ice, and I eye the monsters, trying to make out precisely what they are. Each is easily as big as Ian, spiny, multi-legged, fast-moving, and unquestionably deadly. I can't tell much more of that, thanks both to the distance and the obscuring clouds thrown up by their passage. The past Ian puts on a burst of speed, and without warning, the blizzard erupts out of nowhere. Of course, exactly as it did before. We retreat into the cave, clinging to one another for warmth as the storms of nature howl past outside. We've got to be safe up here, I say, but I don't feel half as sure as I sound. Depends if they can climb or not, Ian replies. What do we do if they can? Haley looks at me imploringly. You'll have to move us on, call or no call. I shake my head. I meant what I said. I couldn't control it, and we were nearly destroyed. Then do what you did before and, to, and send us back in time again. I'd rather that than die. She grabs me by the shoulders, her eyes boring into mine. I look away. We'll help you, Ian says. We can imagine a door. Maybe the three of us can control it together. We sit in a triangle on the cave floor. Haley suggests holding hands, and I figure it can't hurt. 
Her hand is warm and soft in mine, and touching it sends a faint thrill through me that I can't afford to indulge right now. We close our eyes, ignoring the sound of the blizzard outside. The image of the door springs instantly to mind. It's easier this time. Can you see it? I ask the others. I think so, Haley says slowly. It's my playroom from when I was a kid. So her, hers is her childhood room too, just like uh, Felix's wife. Ian's, it's my daughter's bedroom, Ian says gruffly, but there's a thick layer of emotion in his voice that he's holding back. Can either of you reach the handle? I stretch for mine and my mental fingers find the brass again. It's too far away, Ian says. Well, see, this is his first, and so he's going through what Riley went. And my mental fingers, oh, Haley makes a noise of agreement. She can't reach hers either. You have to reach for it. Stretch yourselves. I wish I could be of more help to them, but it's impossible to clearly describe. They have to find it by themselves. The sound of the blizzard cuts out, and I open my eyes in response. Keep trying, I tell them. I need to see. I leave them facing each other in the cave floor, on the cave floor, and I run to the edge, leaning down to see what's happening below. The monsters have nearly caught up with our past selves. They're gaining every second. Haley fires her arrow and then another. I can see myself on Ian's back, arms wrapped around his torso. It's merest moments before the monsters will catch us. Then we're gone. That's when he turned his door handle. I had something tickling my nose. Then we're gone. There's no flash of light or even a shimmer in the air. We're just simply not there anymore. The monsters stop, and now I can see them clearly. Their chitinous skin is black as obsidian, forming a seemingly impenetrable suit of armor around their spindly torsos. Five spiny legs extend like the points of a star, and two clawed arms reach forward from just below the neck. <laughs> that sounds gruesome. Atop that, snappy and hissing, is the head. It's partly like a wolf, to a degree, rows of sharp teeth lining an extended hairy muzzle, but its eyes are compound, a mess of nine or ten pupils glaring from two glittering red clusters. <laughs> that sounds so gross. I wouldn't want it to catch me. Those eyes turn from the spot where Ian, Haley, and I vanished and look up right at me. I shrink back against the cliff face, but I can feel them. They don't need to see me to find me. They can feel my mind and their ravenous for it. I peer over the edge again and to my horror, I see the foremost of the three monsters Turn to the cliff face. They're going to climb up there. Below me and move towards it. The spider like legs lift off the ground as the monster's monster rears up, placing its front three on the wall. It shifts its weight and then somehow it pulls the last two up with it and it's climbing the wall. Its entire body at 90 degrees to the ground as it ascends the sheer vertical rise. No, the other two follow suit. I turn and run. We need to go, I shout to Ian and Haley, still crouched where I left them. They're climbing the mountain. We can't do it, Felix, Haley protests, opening her eyes to look at me, fear plain on her face. We're trying, but we can't do what you can do. They'll be here any second, I cry. Then risk it, Ian says calmly. 
pull us through with you like you did before. Wherever we end up, if we end up anywhere at all, it has to be better than being torn apart by those creatures. He's right. Fine. I sit by them, taking both their hands. From outside, the scrabbly and screeching noises of the monsters are terrifyingly loud. They must be at least halfway up. I close my eyes and reach for the door handle in my room. My fingers curl around it, and I pull. But it won't budge. Something is holding it shut. I stare at the door with my mind's eye, and then I see it. The handle isn't brass anymore. It's black, pitch black, pinned in place by a living, breathing shadow. I draw back from it, and the shadow rises up in front of me, and I hear the same sound I heard back in the forest when we were looking for Haley, that chuckle. You can't run, little traveler. I feel, rather than hear the words, not like the voice in the cave, not blissful and peaceful like it was, but cold jagged and dripping with hate. Stay. Come out of your cave and say hello. We won't bite. Felix, Haley cries. I can't do it, I shout, panicked. They're blocking me. Won't you stay with us? We've waited so very long and we're so very hungry. Then we'd better get moving, Ian declares, pulling us to our feet. Only one way to run. The three of us turn away from the approaching nightmares and flee into the darkness of the cave. It goes back further than I'd initially thought, though the light from the entrance provides only the dimmest of illumination. The roof slopes lower and lower, low enough that Ian has to duck his head as we run the cave shifting into a tunnel running into the mountain. The tunnel dips and suddenly narrows to a crack just wide enough for me to fit through it if I turn sideways. Both Haley and I look at Ian. There's no way he can come any further. No, are they going to lose Ian? Ian sighs resignedly and reaches into the pack slung across his shoulders. From it, he withdraws an axe, its handle carved beautifully with etchings of centaurs in motion, weapons in their hands. The blade is bright, polished steel. This was my father's, he says softly. Kept it with me all this way. Glad I did. What are you doing? Haley asks him, her voice afraid. Ian simply hefts the axe and turns to stand in the center of the tunnel behind us. He's going to protect them in the end. Get yourselves through that crack. They won't be able to follow you. But what about you? She protests and turns to me for support. But there's nothing I can say. I, he says, swinging his axe through the air, I'm going to give these scum a taste of Stalroth steel. Stalroth is from Skyrim, isn't it? She looks fearfully, tearfully to him and then back to me again. There has to be something we can do, she cries. Open the door again, Felix. I told you that I can't, I say quietly. The monsters sealed it shut. As though summoned by my thought, the light at the entrance of the cave is blocked out by the huge, rearing shape of a monster. Its terrible scream fills the tunnel. Go, Ian roars, and I pull Haley towards the crack in the rock. She insists for a moment. She resists for a moment, 
reaching out a hand to Ian, which he touches softly before turning away to face the darkness. Back home, we have a saying, I hear him say calmly as we drop out of the other side of the gap into another tunnel at a right angle to the first. Ride fast and die a good death. You lot certainly ride fast, he calls to the approaching enemy, and I can hear the defiance in his voice. Now watch if you want a good death. We hear the crunch of steel in Chitin, and the, it, maybe that's chitin. I never knew how to spell it or pronounce it. And the howl of the monster, and then another and another. The centaur's allies have caught up. Haley grabs my hand and we run, feeling our way through the pitch black of the tunnel, heedless of the cuts and scrapes of the rocks against our skin. The sounds of battle echo after us, the scream of a monster and an inarticulate battle cry from Ian, a cry of fury and refusal to yield. Tears fill my eyes as the cry is drawn into a scream. Ian scream. And then reduced to a gurgle before cutting out altogether. I pound a fist against the rock, closing my eyes in bitter frustration. I realize the darkness holding the door in my mind shut has weakened torn across the middle by the strike of Ian's axe. With a little effort, I pull the shadows aside, grabbing the handle and pulling the door open. Thank goodness. Beyond it lies time and space, a tumbling cascade that threatens to carry us to oblivion. In the real world, I hear a great crash, a rumbling and a tearing of stone, followed by the cry of the monsters. Oh, God, they're trying to force their way through that gap. Far closer than it should be. Didn't Ian kill any of them? Far closer than it should be, and I realize they've managed to smash their way through into the tunnel after us. We have to go. Where is the call? Why hasn't it sounded for us? Why did Ian have to die? When we find the voice, it's going to answer those questions, and it's going to pay. But for that to happen, we have to survive. So I take the risk. I pull Haley through that door in my mind with me, and the two of us fall, carried away by the rushing torrents of time. That's the end of this chapter. Gosh. Kids, I promise I will not read ahead, but I can't wait until next Friday. I mean, I can wait, but I can't hardly. So next Friday, we will read the next chapter. They are falling through time and space. What will happen to them now? Goodbye, grandkids. I will see you next Friday in this in this segment. Bye-bye.